Okay, so people are going to continue to come in, but I just wanted to uh, start by welcoming everyone. Just good morning to everyone who is joining us today. My name is Nicola Walters, and I am a lecturer at Humboldt State University and the membership and organizing chair for the California Faculty Association, both at HSU and now incoming for the statewide executive board. I have the distinct honor this morning of opening this post-capitalism conference and the pleasure of thanking the supporters who have made this event happen. From HSU, the departments that have supported this conference effort are the Department of Politics, Environmental Studies, Sociology, and Native American Studies. Each have recognized the significance of this conference and are serving as anchors for this important event. I'm also tremendously grateful to the California Faculty Association, both the Humboldt chapter and our statewide faculty to union, which is also serving as an anchor for this event. And it is uh, part of our opening for our CFA events and for the actions that we have on campus as well, the conferences that we host to uh, start all of our conversations with an acknowledgement of the land uh, on which we are gathering. So if you could all please join me in a land acknowledgement finding a comfortable position and taking a moment to pause and recognize the space that we are in. We want to acknowledge that we are gathering today via Humboldt State University, which is located in Arcata, California, which is also known as Goudini, which means over in the woods or among the redwoods, and is the ancestral territory of the Wiat peoples. This includes the Wiat tribe, the Blue Lake, Gra Blue Lake Rancheria, and the Bear River Rancheria. We have peoples continue to maintain a relationship with this land through ceremony, culture, and stewardship. We recognize the significance of these relationships past and present and honor with gratitude the land itself and the people who have stewarded it throughout the generations. This calls us to commit to continuing to learn how to be better stewards of the land we inhabit as well, uh, just recognizing our part as this continual piece of work. To recognize the land as an expression of gratitude and appreciation to those whose territory we, we reside on, and a way of honoring the Indigenous peoples who have been living and working on the land from time immemorial. It is really important that we understand the long-standing history that has brought us to reside on the land and to seek to understand our place within that history. Land acknowledgements do not exist in a past tense or a historical context. Colonialism is a current ongoing process and we need to build our mindfulness of our present participation. Acknowledging the land is an important indigenous protocol that we are honoring here today. Now I have the pleasure of introducing Ted Hernandez, who's the chairman of the Wiat tribe to lead us in a welcome and prayer as we get started this morning. Hello, Dima, Ted Hernandez, Wiat tribal chairman. I wanna thank everybody for allowing me to speak today and, and being here for this conference. I just wanna also give a thanks to our ancestors that came before us for allowing me to speak on Wiat land and my ancestors before me. I would like to also acknowledge that we are all related somehow and somewhere from Creator in all four directions. So at this time, I would like to take a moment and do a small prayer and welcome you all here to We Are Country. Now that we got with Creator, I just thank you for allowing me to be here today to speak to my relatives from all four directions. I just ask that we go through this conference in the way that you want us to go through. I ask that you allow us to ask questions and get the answers that we need. I just thank you for having the presenters here to present for us and giving them the words to speak to all of us. Just go throughout the day and watch out through the day and watch over us and just continue to watch over these lands that the we have people who live on and the people that share it with us. We just thank you for everything you do for us as a community and continue to do for us since time memorial. We thank you for our ceremonies. We thank you for our water. We thank you for our rivers that surround us. And we just continue to ask that you continue to watch over us during these days and these times. Ooh. Thank you again for allowing me to speak and, and having this prayer for you. And I'm looking forward to hearing more today on the conference. It's going to be an exciting day and some exciting lectures. So thank you for having me and thank you and welcome to We Are Country. Thank you so much, Ted. 
I also want to acknowledge the tremendous effort and hard work that has come from Cooperation Humble as an organization that has been instrumental in putting this conference together. Just the vision and the uh, efforts that folks have put together have been uh, what have really woven the fabric of this conference and created the four days that we have in front of us. Uh, so I would like to welcome Ruthie Engelke of Cooperation Humble to speak with us about Cooperation Humboldt's efforts and involvement in creating this uh, this phenomenal conference. Ruthie. Thank you, Nicola. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's really, as Nicola said, it warms my heart to see so many people here this morning. Um, my name is Ruthie Engelke. Um, I'm the education coordinator for Cooperation Humboldt. I'm the one that's been sending you all the messages and memes and pictures and trying to entice you to come to this conference. So thank you for accepting the invitation and being here with us this morning. I'm going to share my screen with you and tell you just a little bit about us at Cooperation Humboldt, who we are and why we are here. Um, I am taking you to uh, the Cooperation Humboldt uh, website and whoops and our welcome here um, to let you know about our mission and what we believe. Um, we believe that our current institutions are fundamentally racist, sexist, and class oppressive, that this is a social, political, and economic systems that incentivize domination and exploitation of people of color and poor, homeless, disabled, queer, and undocumented and indigenous persons. Um, capitalism is an economic system that is based upon exploitation and oppression, and it will destroy the planet if we do not shift to a cooperative and sustainable economic system. We do believe that it is possible to create new institutions that are based on kindness and caring and love and compassion, and that this new system will be capable of supporting every person with a good quality of life. We lift up and support other groups that are doing grassroots organizing and working class folks and people of color who are training organizers. And in this conference, we have tried to bring together as many of those folks as possible to share their vision with you. Um, but we also wanna let you know that we can work with you even if you don't believe these things. Um, but we wanna be explicit and clear about what we believe. And we believe that we can shift um, through resisting and building and um, inspiring and empowering. And we hope that today that is what happens for you, that you're able to, um, oh, there we go. There's our theory of exchange, um, that we resist, we build and we empower and inspire. And so we um, wish you a wonderful day. And if there is anything that you need, please feel free to reach out to the co-op hum ed at Gmail email um, and or message me on Eventee and I'll be happy to help you and, and get you on your way. And I'll send it back to Nicola. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ruthie. I think that it's really important that we take a moment to recognize, as you are providing for us, the reason why this conference has come about. And I just wanted to speak really briefly about what it means for me as uh, a faculty member at HSU and a labor organizer with the California Faculty Association. Um, you know, when we first came together to talk about getting the 2021 post-capitalism conference together, um, and what this would really look like. We had so many ideas and so many passions that were all uh, in the fold that we were looking to just uh, incorporate into these four days. And it really grew into what, into the agenda that you see today. But, uh, you know, for a lot of folks, I think that we have been in a space of, of real concern for where we are going and how we navigate these uncertain times. And it can be very alienating uh, and very, you know, filled with fear when we don't know where we are going. And I think that for uh, us to be able to demonstrate to our community partners uh, that there is a need for these kinds of conversations and then to have the kind of, you know, interest that you can see just pouring into this welcome today uh, is just incredibly moving. 
you know, this is the kind of work that I try to commit myself to as a teacher. Uh, it's to help people to think about other ways of living and being, and to dream of different uh Nicola, you just got muted. We missed your last few things that you were saying. I was saying such incredible things too. It was just little pearls of wisdom and just nuggets for the future lost in the muted space. Okay, so what was the last thing that you heard me say? Did it, was it from the entire time that I was speaking? No, you were just two, just about two sentences back. Okay. Well, uh, let me just be brief then. Uh, what I want to say is that, you know, we are in uncertain times and for us to come to Humboldt State and say that this type of conference that brings the types of conversations together that are going to help guide us to the future, you know, this is something that is actually ideologically uh outside of a lot of the mainstream conversations that have been facilitated. Uh, and I think that it's foundational and critical that we make space for these types of, you know, uh, for us to explore these ideas. Uh, so to have the support from Humboldt State, I'm so grateful that, you know, we're getting that from these different departments that are coming together and sharing in the panel conversations. But not only that, you know, this is absolutely in line with the kind of labor work that we're doing as faculty members. This is integral to the California Faculty Association's efforts for uh, anti-racism and social justice transformation work. We recognize that there are all these uh, issues and struggles that we are all experiencing right now, but that collectivity is so necessary in us figuring out a way to move forward. And so through the exploration of these panels that we've set up, uh, I'm just so grateful that we can dive deeper into the conversation, uh, explore more together, and learn from one another about the work that people are already doing uh, and also be inspired to continue to look for different avenues for change in our own communities, wherever you're joining us from, um, and in our own lives. So I'm so grateful to have the pleasure to welcome everyone to this incredible conference. I'm so excited about the 21 panels that are ahead of us, as well as the folks that are going to be leading us in mindfulness, uh, in yoga, in Zumba, in all the different things that kind of help us to just heal and care for one another because there are a lot of things that we need right now. Um, but hopefully through your time here with the conference, you will find different aspects of it that will speak to your life and help us to uh, move forward as a collective community. So I want to just uh, open it up to any of our other organizers if there was anything else that you wanted to contribute before we get ready for our official panels. Well, howdy, y'all. I'm David Cobb. I am with Cooperation Humboldt and also the co-coordinator of the U.S. Solidarity Economy Network. And I have the privilege of serving on the Collaborative Design Council for Transition U.S., uh, one of the many co-sponsors of this organization. Uh, and I thought, since we are in a post-capitalism conference building the solidarity economy, I might just take a moment uh, to break down why we think that we are headed for a post-capitalist world. Uh, because you see, uh, capitalism is simply an economic system. And we have been trained in this society to imagine that it's just too hard for ordinary people to understand economics. And especially capitalism is so complicated and complex. Best to leave it to the experts, our society and our culture tells us. But first thing, remember that the word economy itself actually comes from the Greek. Uh, and I bet some of you know what it means. It literally means the management of the household or the management of the home. That's literally what the word means when you translate it. So in effect, literally, each and every one of you, each and every one of us are in fact economists because we're all involved in some way with managing our home. And if we take the broad and expansive view of our home and recognize that Mother Earth, in fact, is our home, then can we just take a moment to acknowledge that uh, for the last 500 years, 
uh, we've done a really shitty job of maintaining our home. Uh, and that is a function of the interconnectedness of heteropatriarchy, white supremacy, settler colonialism, and capitalism. Those, oh, that, that, those systems, you see, are all fundamentally based on a power over, dominating, competitive worldview. And what we at Cooperation Humboldt believe is possible, as Ruthie mentioned, is that it's actually possible to shift to a power with dynamic, to shift to a cooperative or collaborative uh, system. Uh, that that new way of being, you see, is not only going to be better for the planet, it will be better for the people. And the other thing that I want uh, to lift up is that that's how human beings once lived on Mother Earth. Uh, we've been told this lie that uh, the way we're currently living is the way it is, the way it's always been and the way it has to be. But in point of fact, that's not true. Uh, any study of history, and I want to lift up the great book, The Chalice and the Blade by Rianne Eisler, uh, but for almost all of human history, uh, human beings actually lived uh, in a sacred relationship with the uh, land and, in fact, the watersheds uh, uh, everywhere on this planet. Uh, the basins of relations are in, of all life, in fact, are watersheds. So the idea of, of the economy really broadly understand is how are we managing our home? How are we, we engaging? How are we stewarding uh, Mother Earth? And then whenever you put the economic system of capitalism into it, uh, I think is where we really see why we have to go post-capitalist. Because capitalism can be actually easily defined. There are five core characteristics of capitalism. The first one, and by the way, as I, as I give these characteristics, I challenge you to imagine, uh, is this what you remember hearing either in civics class in high school or if you went to university or college? Because I promise you, crack open any uh, introduction to macroeconomics, and this is basically the definition. One the private ownership of the means of production. By that, we mean not just the factories, but the farms and the ranches and the fisheries. So all of the things to produce the goods and service that we need are privately owned. Number two, that those goods and services are produced for commodities to be sold, as opposed to human need to, uh, to be used. Uh, the third idea is that those goods and services are sold at a profit what economists call profit maximization. That is, everything is driven by the desire and need to accumulate uh, and to amass more profit. The fourth characteristic, that labor itself, rather than sacred human endeavor, is actually just one more commodity that's bought and paid for. And then lastly, all of that is allocated according to the market. Those are the five key characteristics. And as I say them, I hope that they like most of us are like, yeah, I think, yeah, I think I've heard that. Yeah, that that all makes sense. Here's the thing. It does make sense in the sense that it is inherently consistent. But now let's just take one moment to consider the implications of those five characteristics. Because what I know, and I think you do too, and more and more people are becoming aware that that ideology of capitalism is really based on dig, burn, dump. It is an extractive orientation to Mother Earth herself. It is exploitive of human labor. Uh, it is creating a racist, sexist, and class oppressive society. And if that's not bad enough, and that's really bad, what is really an existential moment is to recognize that this, my friends, leads to the concept of unlimited growth. And unlimited growth on a finite planet is in fact suicidal. I believe that we need to really name it and acknowledge the fact that capitalism as an economic system is literally the ideology of the cancer cell. And like cancer, if it is not treated, it will destroy the host. Now, it's true that capitalism can accumulate things, it can enclose things, uh, it can produce lots of things, but it's done a terrible job of distributing fairly those things, and even worse, it is destroying the planet. So at Cooperation Humboldt, we embrace the regenerative economy framework or the solidarity economy framework that actually has the same five principles, or five principles, 
cooperation. Second, a concept of equity across all dimensions, race, gender, ethnicity, uh, sexual orientation. Uh, third, a commitment to participatory democracy. That is that if a decision affects your life, you ought to have an opportunity to engage in helping to shape that decision. Doesn't mean you get your way, but it means that you actually should participate in making it. And don't you see that if we actually recognize that everybody who is impacted by a decision should get to help to shape it, it literally leads us into learning the democratic skills of collectively listening to each other and striving to find what is something that, 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 that we, the people, can actually uh, live with. The fourth characteristic is uh, understanding of the need to be regenerative and uh, sustainable. Uh, there's any number of ways to talk about this, but it is, in fact, just to recognize the limits of Mother Earth. And then the fifth characteristic that I always like to talk about uh, is a commitment to pluralism, which is to say the solidarity economy framework is not dogmatic and rigid. We know that there are many ways to get uh, uh, to where we want to go. A metaphor that some people use is if you want to get to a mountaintop, there can be many trails up that mountain. There can be many different paths that one can take. So at Cooperation Humboldt, we embrace those principles of the solidarity economy. It's why this conference is actually titled Post-Capitalism, Building the Solidarity Economy, because what I know, and I hope you do too, is that new world is being built right now. It's happening all across the globe. People are engaging in these new ways of doing economics, but it, they are in little niche places. They haven't yet discovered, we haven't completely discovered each other and we haven't knitted together an entirely new social, political and economic system. But that is beginning to happen. And it is our hope that through this conference, we can add to the, the, the process of actually coming together, learning to each other and not just talking about that new world, but building it together. Thank you for the opportunity, Nicola. Nicola. <laughs> Thank you, David. You know, I think that uh, this is such a, a kind of uplifting message that you're sharing with us because a lot of times people feel, as I was kind of trying to talk about right at the beginning, that there's a lot of, you know, struggle and strife. But I think that's very uplifting when people are thinking, well, what can I really do? And it's everyone who's joining this conference are part of what's happening. And so you're doing it right now. And I just find that, uh, you know, something that we are, sometimes think it has to be major, like overhauls in our lives, our communities, but it really is just the act of people coming together, learning and creating uh, those more inclusive networks that are helping to build this new future. So thank you so much for providing us with that message. I wanted to pass it over to Ruthie to kind of just answer any questions um, or do a little bit of housekeeping for us uh, just as y'all are getting situated here in the conference today. Thanks, Nicola. Um, I just wanted to do a little housekeeping and um, make sure everyone knows that we are going, we are recording all of the sessions. There are 26 actually sessions here. Um, you would have to be a marathon man like Farzad to attend all of the sessions, which I, I want to take a second to um, thank Farzad. He is, um, he is handling all of the tech here and is going to be in every single session today watching. Um, I just want to thank him for his hard work and, um, and uh, always cheerful de demeanor. So just give a thank you to Farzad if you see him um, and say hello. Um, he's just been wonderful. Um, today is going to be quite a long day. We have um, the next, the first session is regenerative economic development to re-indigenized. Super excited about that one. Uh, David will join um, Chase Iron Eyes and Michelle Vassell. Then will be the Green Eco Socialist Network, an exciting collaboration that is going on there. Margaret Kimberly, Rich Whitney and Gloria Matera, beautiful people will talk you through that one. Um, Trinity Tran, Rick Wolf and Mike Strode are going to talk about where we are and how do we get to where we're going to be. Um, 
uh, there will be a food sovereignty session that will also um, that will include um, several people from our organization. Um, we'll have a standing with life, building global climate justice, and we'll round out the end of the day with cannabis equity programs, creating a, a cannabis solidarity economy, which is our first of two um, cannabis sessions. There will be a second one tomorrow, um, Friday, that will be very local about Humboldt County because Humboldt County, County depends very much on cannabis in our economy here. Um, but I wanted to take a second to see if there were any questions from anybody. Um, are there any issues that you're having? Um, and you can use the chat um, to do that. And, and we can answer them for you and, and do it now in person. I also wanted to take a second to acknowledge the folks are here. So also use the chat um, to say hello. Um, I am here in Jarajiji, also known as Eureka, California. Um, and feel free to share where you are and uh, where you are visiting us from. And I also wanted to take a second while we're doing that um, and because I, I don't see anybody in the chat yet, but oh good, there we go. There's a couple of people beginning to say hello. Um, but let's also take a little bit of a grounding here. Um, Zoom can really make us feel separated and bring us together. We have uh, the, the good fortune to be able to um, have this technology that allows us to communicate with people from all over the, the planet that we live on and to cooperate and um, and learn to work together. So I want to take a second here. I know a lot of you have your screens turned off and we are, I believe five pages, there are five pages of us here this morning. But if you could take a moment, um, because if we were all together, we would be able to look into each other's eyes. We would be able to acknowledge each other's presence. And that's hard to do on Zoom. But if you would take a moment and if you have your uh, camera off, go ahead and turn your camera back on and what I want you to do is try to see everyone. You may have to flip through the pages in order to do it. We won't actually be looking at each other, but take a moment and feel like you are meeting the eyes of every person in this room, in this room together with us because we are together and it is going to take all of us to make this shift that we all know needs to happen. So I'm gonna stay silent for a moment and let y'all continue to introduce yourself in the chat and let's just take a grounding moment to breathe together and look into each other's eyes. Thank you all. These are your people um, and have a wonderful day. And again, if there is anything that we can do for you or anything we can help you with, please, please let us know. And I will turn it back to Nicola. Well, I just can't think of a better way to start Earth Day, y'all. This has been just, you know, remembering the land that we're uh, on, you know, as a really critical component of that, recognizing, you know, the people that are tied to the fabric of that landscape, you know, thinking about how we're coming together from across the world. I've seen people entering, or adding to the chat that they're talking, or they're joining us from France or Scotland or Eugene or Los Angeles or New York. We have people from across this world. So I think that, you know, this is just kind of continuing that uh, theme of the morning of we're not in this by ourselves. We have a growing network of power, strength, of unity, of solidarity on issues that are so foundationally important to our future. And uh, I'm so glad that people are also acknowledging the uh, ancestral land that they're on. I'm also calling and I'm seeing in the chat from Kalapuyan land in Eugene, Oregon. So hello, Graham. <laughs> you know, we're going to be finding people throughout this conference that we'll, we'll be continuing conversations with. It doesn't stop with just uh, our panels of just kind of zooming in and zooming out. You are all entering into uh, a real growth moment of all of us being able to come together and learn from one another. 
and take these experiences and conversations to not only build relationships, but to change our lives. Mm-hmm.